Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25. We are brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill. I'm Justin Barrientos. Thanks for joining us today. Here is uh, Tom Sawyer once again from the Warrior football team. Uh, thanks for joining us. And really exciting game this past weekend. It's kind of a shame we didn't have it here on TV 25, uh, but uh, almost everything happened in the game. He came away with the 28-26 victory. Uh, your final thoughts on the game? Uh, we won. That's all I can remember, to be honest with you. It was kind of a blur there uh, in the in the pouring rain at times and wind and, and just one of those kind of days. But I think it was a, a game that our, uh, I was happy, one, that we won. But two, I think we learned a lot about ourselves um, that we, we now know that we can come back in a game and win and win it late, um, do what it takes to win a football game. I think we needed that um, as a program right now and, and for our kids, kind of their psyche. So um, yeah, there was a lot of things going on in the game, uh, turnovers, and you know, but that happens in those kind of weather, bad weather games. Uh, but our kids stepped up to the plate when we needed them most, um, including our special teams. Our, our defense made stops when we had to, um, and of course Paul made the kick to, to win the game at the end. But there's a lot of parts to get to that point that uh, did a nice job at the end. Now this is a game that you led at the half, and then the lead kind of slipped away, and then you were able to come back in this one. Uh, what was the mood among the coaching staff, among the players, when that lead is slowly starting to slip away? Well, I, I, we just we we're just looking to continue to find big plays, um, and and we just kept talking about just do things right, and good plays are going to come to you. And you know, Joe will be an ex a perfect example of that. When you do things right, the big plays come to you. Mm -hmm. If you press and try to make something happen or do somebody else's job for them. Um, it usually is a bad result. So we just kept pushing for just do it right. It's good, good things are going to happen. Let's go make a play. Um, and we did. And, and uh, we made a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And so that was good to see, especially by a bunch of young kids. All right, let's start at the beginning of the game because that was pretty exciting as well. Isaiah Hall with the kick return. Yeah, something we really focused on last week. I challenged the guys uh, in the, in the, during the week, um, right out in the middle on a, on a practice field, just saying these special teams units are going to win us games and or they can lose you games but most importantly is the technique that we're using and the understanding of leverage um, was critical and when they did it right you, you saw the results and, and not everybody's going to do it right all the time um, but when we in particular had a couple of kids that hadn't been getting it done made a couple of big blocks and you know isaiah and and uh and and jake blue both they don't need a lot of space uh, you give them a crease and they can be gone at any time and and we got that and uh when he hit it, man, he was gone, and it was really fun to see. All right, um, so when that happens, then obviously that's that's great for the sideline, great for morale of everybody. Yeah. Um, how, how does that propel you then uh, going forward in the game when you when you get well, like, off to a good yeah, start? It's, yeah, it's like getting, you know, it's like getting a, just a, you know, a, a shot of insulin. I mean, you're just like ready to go. It's what you needed, you know, and to get the, to get the game started, um, especially in bad weather. You know, good things happen, and all of a sudden it's, the rain doesn't matter as much, and yeah. You know, it's not as cold and, and those kind of things. And, um, but it just, it was, a, it was a sense of uh, a little bit of relief. And it's like, okay, here we go. And, uh, and our kids were excited to be playing in the football game. I think we really handled the weather right. Um, it didn't matter. It wasn't that cold and it wasn't that wet. It was, it was kind of miserable for the people watching. Sure. Um, but for our guys, they were out there, they were doing their thing. All right, and it was kind of a bounce back game uh, too for Owen Burke as well. Yeah, Owen played much better, and, and he just played a lot more calm, um, understanding what, what pictures he had in front of him, um, and, and made the adjustments. Um, we're still we're still not at the highest level of our offense, even close yet, but uh, we're, we're coming. And, and he's obviously the trigger man, and uh, when he's right, we're really good. And uh, you know, guys caught the ball well. Um, Tyler Anderson had a fantastic game, uh, over 100 yards in receiving, and. You know, so we've been kind of waiting for some breakout stuff with that receiver group. And, you know, we, we still run a lot of guys out there, um, but he really did a nice job. We only had a couple drops. One went right through our guys' hands, and they picked one out of that. Um, but at the same time, for the way that we handled the football for that kind of a day, I thought we really did a nice job. Yeah, I was going to say there are a couple of different players uh, that – were kind of standouts for you, Tyler Anderson, um, on the receiving end, and then Landon Jacobson led you in rushing. Yeah, he did a nice job. Uh, you know, um, Sam Santiago Lloyd has you know been kind of a, the workhorse for us, and, and in the last two games now, um, Landon's come in the game has really done a nice job. He's a physical guy. He's he's emotional. He's he's a guy that the, the team rallies around. Not that they don't with Sam, but he's just that guy that's yeah. been hurt his whole career, and always got a chance to play, and everybody's rallying for him. So. He made some, you know, made some guys miss and ran over a couple guys and just kind of rumbling and stumbling, and that's what he does. Um, and so it's fun to see him out there. We sat here and talked about him, you know, a few weeks back, but um, here he is, and he's a, he's a tremendous part of this program. 
All right, defensively, uh, there's a lot to talk about, really. We can talk about Cole Moncton uh, leading with eight tackles, talk about Michael Gomez uh, getting a sack. Uh, how did you feel the defense played in this game? I thought they played really well. Um, it wasn't their best performance. Um, we had some really good performances from some, some individuals um, I thought really played well. Um, and, and Joe Perhats with his you know, two, two interceptions and a fumble right. recovery. We'll get to that when he comes in. But um, I think Cole played well. We got beat a couple times deep on, on some deep balls with different guys. But if we can keep the thing in front of us, um, it really makes a difference. Uh, they have a good quarterback. He was a true freshman. He's our backup, but he can throw it. Um, but Michael Gomez was a workhorse. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've, we've played five games so far, and nobody's, they don't call holding on him. I think they hold him every play, so they just think that's normal. I, I'm, I'm serious. It's, 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 a, it's a problem. Um, and, and again, he just keeps working and keeps working. And, and we knew, when we needed him the most, he showed up. And at the end of the game, and that's, that's what captains do. Let's talk about that fourth quarter because it was a, kind of a crazy quarter. You end up getting a safety. There's a field goal that was blocked. Paul Ortiz gets the winning kick. Um, kind of walk us through the, the events of the fourth quarter. Whew, I don't know if, if I can, can remember if I can remember them all, but <laughs> you know, you, you talk about handling the ball in wet weather, and, and we were out there for two days during the week, and I'm sure they were too because it was raining everywhere. But we spent a lot of time working with bad balls, and um, Cole Stewart, our long snapper, nobody knows who he is because he does things right. And, um, you know, Tyler Anderson's the holder. And so that part of the game is critical. And you saw what happens when it doesn't, when they snap it over the kid's head by five feet over his head. I was hoping the thing would stay in the end zone we get a touchdown on the deal, but it went out the back. Um, and then, you know, from there, then we, you know, the, the punt comes back and then Jake coughed one up. It was like, okay, he never does that. And then that happened. And then Joe gets the pick. And then we're, he takes it back for like 50 yards. All of a sudden, as soon as we cross midfield with the win that we had in the fourth quarter, which, by the way, flipped in the middle of the game, um, we knew that Paul was good from 60 and in. So once we got in that side of the zone, we're like, okay, now we got to manage the clock and uh, give him the best opportunity we can. And then we had two holding penalties um, out, out of the blue. So all of a sudden, we're back, you know, second and 30 or whatever it was. And, and uh, I get, now Jake Blue comes through again. Um, so he fumbled it once, and uh, you know, 10 minutes later in the day, he turns around and he takes the ball for a big gain and puts us back in field position. And, and then you got to execute it because we already had one blocked, right? So the execution of that was critical. So we, we took a timeout. I really could have probably should have, um, one of those would have, could have, but I, I should have burned more time off the clock. Um, but we had already had one blocked. So I wanted to take a time to make sure that our protection was set in our PAT field goal to give us the best opportunity. I knew it was only going to be a 35-yarder, um, which you know, not only, but it right. is what it is, especially with that wind and wet, that I want to just take a moment, take a pause, um, and left, you know, like 40 seconds on the clock, which, you know, we know that that's not a good thing. But at the same time, um, it worked out best for us. The guys, the protection was great. Snap hold was good, and Paul knocked it through. All right. Uh, I know that we already talked about Isaiah Hall, but uh, his combined yards in the game, that was one thing that I highlighted that I wanted to mention. 174 combined yards. Obviously, the 98-yard uh, mm -hmm. kick return will add to that. But uh, just kind of overall, his performance in that. He, he's a game changer, um, you know, like Jake Blue is on our offense right now. Those guys that, that can, every time they touch it, something's going to happen or something, you know, they don't throw the ball to him very often either, you know, and so when they do, there's a pretty good chance we're going to get our hands on it as well or bat it down or something. So people have been kind of staying away from him from the passing side of things. Um, but when he touches the football and the kick return stuff, um, I don't know, because we're going to bring them out. For the most times, if we're two, three, four yards deep in the end zone, we're coming out because those are scoring plays. And uh, he's that where he can change the face of a game um, every time he touches it. All right, a Warrior win, 28-26. to 26. We are going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. When we come back, Joe Perhats will join us right after this. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub & Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, Huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, we told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. Let's do it. Ta -da! Yeah! Hey, welcome to Garage Squad. Yeah! Congratulations. Ah! Put your thing down and we'll do the ch and pull up. Yeah, we're done. Piece of cake. Come on, there we go. You guys ready to see it? Yeah, baby. It's just very emotional. A dream come true. 
Garage Squad. New episode Wednesday at 10 on Motor Trend. See you guys then. From the producers of Live PD. Sheriff's Department search warrant. A new series follows the search for the country's most wanted fugitives with host Tom Morris Jr. Okay, Live PD Nation, it's time to ride. Please. Live PD Nation, you've helped catch 20 fugitives. Keep your hand in the air. But the search. All right, fellas, nice and easy. Let's do it right now. Is just getting started. Police. Lose your hands in the air. Live PD Wanted, Thursdays at 10 on A&E. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25. We're brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill. Joe Perhat joins us. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Now, we always like to go back to high school uh, to find out who you were before you uh, came to Winona State. Uh, you're a redshirt freshman uh, from Prairie Ridge uh, High School, and you're from Cary, Illinois. Uh, it is a, a big tradition of warrior players uh, coming from there. In fact, you're one of three players uh, from your graduating class that, that came here to Winona State. Why is Winona State so uh, popular in that area? I don't know. It, it kind of started out with uh, Nick Margiotta and Colin Corcoran. Uh, both came up here, had successful careers. Uh, Michael Gomez, I'm, I've known him for a long time. Uh, he went to my rival high school, so my brother played against him, and, and we heard he was up here, and, and they do a good job of recruiting down by us, and, and we play some good football down in Illinois. so. Uh, that's how we ended up up here. So as I said, you had two teammates that, that are also on the Warriors, Zach Gilbertson and Jacob Allman. Uh, who was the first uh, to decide to come here? Zach O'Branson was actually the first to decide to come here. Uh, after he came shortly after, I decided, and then later in the process, Jacob Allman uh, decided to come here. And, and it's been fun. You know, we're, we're all close friends. We were in high school, played together since we were five, six years old. Um, and, and it's been fun to continue that in college. And you were able to win two state championships back-to-back, uh, -back, I think, uh, perfect seasons uh, both times. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it, it was a fun fun little ride, you know. Uh, we, we had five guys our freshman year play on varsity. Um, so we had, we had a lot of talent, and, and we knew that. But it was, it was taking it one game at a time, one step at a time, uh, staying close together, not getting in any trouble, uh, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it, it worked out. It was, it was a blast, and we got to try to bring that winning culture here. You know, talk about that even a little bit farther, but, you know, the things that we talk about in our program, I know are very similar to your program, but how do you make that relationship between um, transitioning from high school into the college level with all the other things that are added into the college sports scene? Yeah, you know, you just, you got to focus on football. It's football season right now. We got to focus on that. Uh, all the other stuff is, is later down the road and, and out of season. So it's, it's keeping everybody together, uh, making smart decisions and really focusing on, on football. You know, and obviously this year now is your first year playing, coming off your redshirt season, and, and all of a sudden you're an impact player in, in ball games. Uh, the last few weeks you're really starting to play well. Um, what, what has provided you, what have you had to do to provide that opportunity for yourself uh, to get on the field and then be able to make plays like you did last week? Yeah, you know, just, just working hard, watching film. Uh, in high school you do your 111th, uh, obviously same thing here. Uh, so just taking what we learned in film uh, with Coach Ulrich and, and transitioning onto the field and if everybody does their job like you said earlier plays will come to you you know the, and the last one I have then is you know the game you had two picks you know like I keep telling you I told you on the bus I told you about three times a year you got to score on those plays but yeah. but uh, very impactful part of the game um, and then the fumble recovery at the end as well so what was that like for you and your family uh, it, it was a lot of fun you know uh, the first one was kind of alarming I didn't even see it coming I just saw the ball in the air right over my head uh, <clears throat> grabbed it and, and, and started running. And then the second one, you know, we were running a little bit of the QB spy stuff. Uh, and same thing, the good pressure up front from Michael, Cole, and Q. Uh, uh, applying pressure to that quarterback made him scramble a little bit. And he came up and th tried throwing across the middle. And again, I just picked it off and started running to the sideline. <laughs> I got to ask you about playing the linebacker position. Uh, obviously, you have your assignments, but you could be covering a receiver. You could be scouting the running back that's coming out. You could be going after the quarterback. Uh, what is it like to, to kind of have all those different things to have to uh, figure out during a game? It's good. It's, I actually love it. It's a lot of fun. You know, you get to go pass rush. Uh, work on the offensive tackles. You get to play off the ball a little bit. A uh, chance to get the ball in your hands, you know, and, and covering some skill guys. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun and and it's can get confusing. A lot of different play calls, a lot of different stuff going on, but it, it's a lot of fun. All right, and the last question I have for you is, uh, how much did your red shirt season help you in the success that you're having now? That you had a, a year to kind of watch the game from the sidelines, figure out the speed of the game, figure out what Winona State was all about. Absolutely, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know. Watching, watching older guys like Ducky and Trey. Um, unfortunately, Ducky's not going this year, but last year, uh, watching him 
re really helped a lot uh, at practice. You know, we, we got the reps. We were able to ask those older guys the questions. Uh, being a redshirt, you don't get as much attention from, from the coaching staff, especially during the season. So asking those guys what we need to be doing, how to get better, all that really helps. And, and they did a good job of that. They brought us in uh, under their wings and, and helps create a winning culture. All right. Well, thank you for being here today, and good luck this week. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. When we come back, Paul Ortiz will join us right after this. Look out! It's got a no. wax! This is life with a special needs dog. It's really just adjusting our thought of what's normal, because these dogs are very normal. No teeth, no jaw, no problem. She's the most resilient dog ever. I'm so proud of you. He can't see, but he can follow a toy just based off of scent. Good boy! You give yourself wholeheartedly to these dogs, and when they get adopted, they take a piece of you. There are a lot of qualities that make up a Forged and Fire champion, but more than anything, it probably takes... We're back. Yes! Woo! To the Forge. Come on the show, they said. Forge. Heat up. Forge. Press. Fit. Finish. Balance. <laughs> Forged in Fire is back with all new episodes Wednesdays at 9 on History. The internet just got an upgrade. One gig internet is being hailed as a tipping point, revolutionary, and a game changer. No, not that game. This game. The critics are going all in on one gig internet. Push your internet to the limit, then rake in the rewards. Get blazing fast speed up to one gigabit per second with Luminet Internet from HBC. Call 888-474-9995 today. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25, brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill. And we have Paul Ortiz with us. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's start off with the, the game-winning field goal uh, this weekend. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, you, you have to kind of prepare for that on the sidelines. You see the team is marching down the field. You think, okay, I, I might have a chance here. What are some of the things that you're going through on the sidelines to get you ready for a kick like that? Uh, mentally, I'm just thinking about what, what, what I'm going to do, pretty much the kick, not to do anything extra, and just keep it the same as always. Uh, the biggest thing was I, I trusted and believed in my team that they were going to put me in the position because, I mean, when we all come together as a unit, I feel like our team is unbeatable. So it was more so just... Let, let's be ready to go. Yeah. It, it, I don't really remember a lot about it, to be honest, because I was just so focused in the moment, just because uh, a big thing we focused on was like mental toughness. So I'm just thinking, let, let me do my, my part since everyone's going to do their part. So okay. I got to dominate what I can control. You know, we, we, we always talk about, you know, the connected parts. You know, you got Cole and you got Tyler and, and you, and, and you guys spend a lot of time together throughout the week practicing. but. How important is that trust factor um, in a wet condition? We got a wind. We had a right to left wind. Um, well, we talk about it all the time. But, but how is that on the sideline with you getting ready, like, like, like Justin said, when you know you got to trust in somebody else first? Uh, the trust, that, that's huge. Uh, there's been times where, like when I first got here, and we don't have that chemistry yet because we don't really know each other. But then once we build that, I, I trust that no matter what condition it is, Stu is going to fire it back to the spot because... He does it time and time again, mm -hmm. you know, and then Tyler, he, he's going to get the ball done. So it's really, if you don't trust it, it's going to fall out of sync. So you just have to trust it no matter what. And that's like, that's probably the biggest factor in my opinion. You know, another question I have about trust is, is your family. And uh, being from San Diego, you know, they're a long ways away. And I know they're coming up again this weekend. Um, but, you know, you're out in the middle of, you know, Moorhead, Fargo area, and your parents are back in sunny San Diego. Uh, but how important is it when you know you have your parents coming in for one of your games? Oh, it's huge. It's huge because, I mean, that's probably the one thing. There, there's like three things that I do it for, and that's the biggest one because mm -hmm. through everything, they, they've been there and supported me. No matter what it is, they, they got my back. So I just want to make them proud. And the last one I have for you is, is you know, making a big field goal like that, 35-yarder, um, for, for us is, is pretty routine. Um, but... I guess tell the people where do you think you're good from on a normal calm day and what do we expect in the homecoming game? Oh, on like a calm day, I'd say 65 for sure. It's a little inconsistent from like 68, but 65. So my goal this year is really to break that record. 
I want to leave here as the best, so that's what I'm working for. Very good. And I think the record is 59, so uh, mm -hmm. the, yeah, 60 would definitely do that. I got to ask you, uh, Carter McCauley, who holds the record, would tell us before that before every kick, he would make sure that he was back far enough on the sidelines so that when he would go to um, the spot where the holder was going to be, that the goalposts, you know, seem to, to, to get bigger. Do you have any kind of idiosyncrasies? Do you have any rituals that, that you go through before a kick? Uh, so I'll do like, I'll do three kicks into the net and I'll do two air kicks. And then I, I close my eyes honestly and I take a deep breath and let it out. And I think about everything that's led up to this point. So it's just, uh, how, how do I want to be remembered? And I want to do my part for my team, honestly, because they support me through everything. So I want to be able to provide for them, you know. All right, and one more question. You had, you had uh, number 41 last year. You changed it to nine this year. Is it really because of Justin Tucker? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, before every game, even before practice, honestly, too. I, I go on YouTube and I look up Justin Tucker game winning field goal highlights. It's like a 15 minute video, honestly. <laughs> I watch it. That's what Does I'll, he look at yours now? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. But I mean, I aspire to be up there at that same level. All That's right. my goal. Very good. Well, thank you for being here today, and uh, good thank luck this week in homecoming. Thank you. All say, right. Say hi to Justin. What's up, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. We'll talk about my not stage in the homecoming game right after this. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub & Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, we told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. There are a lot more sad moments than happy moments. Never could you have prepared me for what we do with her. This is what we do and this is what we've always done. Got your little head. To get to give such an incredible dog to a home filled with so much love. Oh. You're home. You're home, girl. This is something that we will remember forever. Top designers for suburban homes. The renovation showdown is on. This is my turn. I don't like to lose. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna crush the competition. It's time to rock the block. Rock the block. All new Monday night at nine on HGTV. Building Alaska has something for everyone. Today is my favorite day. Uncrowded beaches. It's a balmy 10-ish degrees. Relaxing boat trips. The icebergs have floated back in. And vigorous workouts. <sighs> oh, there's the bears you have to outrun. I don't want to be out here anymore. You work hard. Treat yourself to a room with a view. It looks great. You deserve this. Watch an all-new Building Alaska, Sunday night at 9, only on DIY Network. And welcome back. One more segment here on the Tom Sawyer Show on HPC TV 25, brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill. Before we get to all the homecoming stuff, I want to ask you, uh, if you follow uh, Warrior Football on any social media, you've been seeing a lot of thank yous to NFL teams that have been coming to visit you in practice. Can you tell us a little bit about um, why you think that is this year? I mean, there, it seems to think there's more NFL attention this year than there has been in years past. Well, I think, you know, first of all, Nick Pridgen is a, is a prospect um, in, our, in our senior class. Uh, and also Paul has been a, is a guy that we've been talking about as well. So um, Nick really was a year ago. And uh, so this is like the second time through for him. So first of all, they knew who he was, and then they see that he's healthy. Um, and that's another reason um, that they want to come back. Um, and, I, and I think we're located in a great place. Uh, you know, the, the regional scout guys that have been in, um, we've had a couple scouts from the same team come, so that gets a little bit more advanced. Yeah. Um, and then we get into the, um, a little deeper into the season, and then after the season we start looking at if a position coach comes in or they start doing some testing and then to a pro day. So it's really just a process, uh, and they're looking at uh, getting a little bit deeper in the conversations one is, do they have the ability? Second of all, do they fit their, um, you know, their their guidelines on the kind of player they want? Um, they get really detailed about the on and off the field stuff, their academics, 
um, their involvement with the community, their involvement with the university, um, their leadership principles, all, all those things now are starting to be more important. Um, first, you just got to be a guy they want to look at, and then it goes to the, the level they're at. So that's why we're seeing so many in now, because they're all taking individual notes to see if they match their criteria uh, for what they're looking at, uh, especially in those two kids' uh, perspectives. All right. Do you have a kind of running total? How many have, uh, have been here? I think we've had 14 wow. uh, teams in, um, and so it's a pretty good. We've had a couple that have been back you know, multiple times. Um, you know, and, and the scouts really do a nice job, and and you know they're they're here, they're at Mankato, so they're doing our schools. But we're where we're located between Wisconsin and Minnesota. You know, it, it's it's easy to stop in and see our guys, and so where we're located is really important. And they know the quality of our program. That uh, when when I talk to them, or when our position coaches or our trainers, um, we talk to them, they know they're going to get a straight story. And we're just not going to try to sell them some kid for, for us. It's really about the opportunity for the player. All right. Very exciting stuff. Yeah. Uh, homecoming is this weekend. So yeah. Minot State is in town. It's a 2 p.m. kickoff uh, this Saturday. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the events that are going to be associated with the game? Yeah, a lot of things going on. One is it's really cool. And, and uh, for other people that see the show, too, it, it, we get alumni back in the classroom. Uh, so we get some of our former players that are back you know, teaching um, and, or you know whether it's a college of business, college of education, or whatever, we get those guys back and and be involved with the the current players. Um, the second part is um, you know we have an FPA, our Football Players Association. We have our annual meeting coming up, and they've done a tremendous job and and really ramping up our game day experience and our fundraising activities and those things. Um, and then Friday night we have the Hall of Fame uh, banquet, and there's one football player going in the Hall of Fame this year, um, and that's Brian Hines, uh, was a, a Harlan Hill candidate which is the uh, Heisman Trophy of Division II, mm -hmm. um, back when he played in 03 and 04, that era. Um, and also, uh, Connie, one of Connie's players, Lisa Doby, is going in as well as Zach Melvick. So we, we have a really nice group going in um, into the Hall of Fame from, from kind of our time here. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the parade on Saturday, which is always great at 10 o'clock in the morning. Saturday, you know, the homecoming parade's always fun. We'll have our seniors involved with that and, and uh, kind of a pep fest Friday afternoon. And, and uh, then, you know, our game, that's game day. And we bring in a lot of recruits, and that's a working day. So it, it's fun. Um, and we also have a 25-year reunion of the 1994 team. And uh, Coach Curtin was part of that team um, back when we, we won back-to-back -back championships in 93-94. All right. Well, very good. Um, Minot State is the opponent. Um, they're 2-3 uh, and three this year. You're 3-2 and two coming into it. Um, their wins against Mary and Crookston. Their losses Duluth, Northern, and Southwest. What else do you know about uh, Minot State? Well, they have a bunch of really good athletes, um, and they just they just haven't put a team together yet. Uh, if you look at their roster, they're from every place, um, um, which is which is harder to put together. Um, so they're struggling with that a little bit, and, and you know the coaching staff we know they've been around our league for many many years. Um, but where they're going to come down here, they're going to they're going to play hard. Um, they always play hard. They got some weapons. They got a punt return, kick return kid that's pretty dynamic. In fact, he took one for about 107 yards against Duluth that ended up on ESPN. So we don't want to be on ESPN for that reason. <laughs> right. So um, our cover team is going to be important. But um, they have some good skill. Uh, we just try, got to corral it. And really, if we reduce our mistakes, I, I think we'll have a good Saturday. All right, and then uh, the injury report. Um, how are you heading into this game? Yeah, actually better than we went going into the last one. Uh, we didn't have any new injuries. Um, our guys are really taking good care of their bodies right now, and our flexibility program is showing up and those kind of things. So it's really, it's, it's, we're in a good place, um, better than we've been in the last couple of years, and uh, now it's just doing it right more often, and, uh, and that's where we're at. But the injury report, we're in great shape. All right, and then uh, your Thursday luncheon will continue again this week? Yeah, Thursday luncheon um, is at the Riverport Inn at noon on Thursday. We do a lot of the similar things we're doing right now. We bring in a couple players to, uh, to share you know, where they are in their, their academic and athletic careers and, and have a great lunch put on by Riverport. And uh, again, noon on Thursdays. All right, well, thank you for being here and enjoy yeah. homecoming. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, thank you for watching the Tom Sawyer Show here on TV25. We'll see you next week.